Life is Strange 2, the sequel to Life is Strange, of course, a game that came out during the height of Telltale Games. For those uninformed, these games follow the basic formula of point-and-click adventure games, but they take away most of, if not all, of the puzzle elements of those games to focus on a linear narrative, leaving the exploration side of this game more focused on world building. They also, for the most part, follow an episodic structure, this trend arguably being started by the really well received Walking Dead Telltale video game. But Life is Strange 2 came out at a time when the popularity and even viability of episodic games had been dwindling down, even leading to the closure of Telltale. But Life is Strange 2 is not developed by Telltale but a French studio called Don't Nod Entertainment. And while the game had a troublesome release schedule, taking rather large gaps between episodes, taking over a year to release all five, but while that really doesn't concern this review as the game is all out now and that's what I'll be reviewing, I think it might give some interesting context to something I might mention later in the review. I'll start with the more technical sides of this game. Graphically and aesthetically, it's very gorgeous. They don't try and look too realistic, going more for a cartoony look with realistic proportions. The color schemes are very pleasant, for example at the beginning of the game there is a very noticeable orange tone having a very autumn -y feel to it, which makes sense given this game starts around Halloween. Areas also have a high level of detail, which feels almost obligatory in a game with such a big focus on exploration to build up its world. The one gripe I have with this graphics is people's faces, which in a game like this is quite a problem, of course. It's not that they don't look well detailed, it's more that they look weird when they talk. Something about their faces just has an uncanny feeling. I'm no expert, but to me it felt like something about the eyes and how they move a lot of the times but their head doesn't. There was just a disconnect there that felt very weird to me and did mess with my experience obviously. This is a little bit subjective of course and it might not affect you, but it's something I felt I needed to point out as I feel as I would not notice this in another type of game, like a shooter let's say. But giving again the narrative focus of this experience, it becomes very noticeable, as a lot of what you will do as a player during these conversations is just observe. Moving on to the soundtrack, it sounds good, it is mostly licensed music, a lot of it with the lyrics of the songs taken out, so your taste may vary, of course, but I felt that it fit the story well, although sometimes the music can be a bit too much in your face or kind of exploitative in the feelings that is trying to get out of you and because of it can lead to it be more obnoxious than effective. I'll try to explain without spoiling, but for example in episode 2 they play a song that I actually personally really like and listen to before this game and that song has a particular meaning of someone passing away and while the game is being sort of ambiguous on the matter, the song makes it clear what it should mean and they keep playing it almost to keep insisting that that's the real meaning of what's going on. While the game story is being very vague and gives no concrete answer on the matter, which I think only creates confusion and annoyance on the player, especially when later on in the game it's revealed that the song was giving the wrong idea. Which you'd think this leads me to talk about the story, but given that that's a big can of worms, I want to get the gameplay out of the way first. Being that it's not really something people think about with these kinds of games, sometimes gameplay in these games can kind of go as an unsung hero, as you only really think about it when it's bad. But here, in terms of movement, it's good. Characters don't feel clunky to move around like in other games in the same genre. Picking between objects in the environment is also well labeled and easy, even when there's multiple objects in close proximity, when clicking something usually 
the main character will give some sort of thought on it and if you click on it a second time you can just skip it or hear it again which all of these things are good as they make it for a more fluid and stress-free experience going through the game without hampering the narrative. And there is a lot to explore in the environments, really doing a good job of world building as a lot of times locations will almost be like reflections of the people that live there. Which, <laughs> I'm sorry, leads me to talk about the actual story here. So what is Life is Strange 2 about? Well, these two brothers, the older brother being the main character, run away after an incident, a dispute between the older brother and the neighbor that ends up in the death of a police officer and the two brothers' dad. The police officer having been killed by this mysterious power of the little brother, much like the main character from Life is Strange 2, one had its own supernatural powers, even though this one being very different, the idea of Life is Strange remains the same, even if the plot is drastically different. The first problem with the story is the fact that they run away. Story-wise, it's really hard to justify it. Sure, a police officer died, but their dad also died being killed by the police officer. With proof, while there is no proof of who killed the officer. Their main guess is a bomb, but there is no proof of it. Them running away is really hard to justify because it just makes them look guilty. While the main characters are some sort of Mexican ethnicity, they're not illegals, as their mother is American, so that angle doesn't work either. To make it worse, this takes place in Seattle, an already famously left-leaning city. The only thing giving some credibility to them running away is the possibility of them not knowing if the neighbor was alive or not, but he is literally out of the hospital the next day, which still wouldn't be too late to turn yourself in, in my opinion. And the main character did have access to this news and was in walking distance, as far as we know. I know that the game was trying to make a racial, a political statement and Life is Strange 2 is a very political game which can be a deterrent to a lot of people but I personally don't mind. I think most stories have some amount of political message within them, it being deliberate or not. Of course there is a difference between that and this game that is much more overtly political and I don't mind that either but this game doesn't really make it believable for the most part. But once you get over that premise of the beginning of the game being so flawed, the problems continue. As the story goes on, people for the most part have very black and white moralities. People are usually really good to you or just absolute pieces of garbage. While there is some good ideas here, for example, the idea of assuming responsibility and being thrusted into the place of a caretaker, especially here, the little brother having superpowers, almost working as a hyperbolic, showing how he can feel to take care of someone so young when you're so young yourself. But because of its overwhelming problems, it never really achieves a coherent and satisfying arc. Writing can also be a problem. I haven't been a teenager for a few years now, nor am I an American, but man, does this writing, much like the first Life is Strange, feel like what a French adult thinks American teenagers sound like. You know, like they haven't really met one and they only seen them in movies or TV shows of the CW variety. Even if I agree with a lot of the messages being put into this game, the way they are here feels exploitative and misleading. Again, the soundtrack emphasizing that. People in this game who are morally grey never get properly developed and usually just end up acting in a very stereotypical way. Even the quote-unquote morally good characters tend to be cliché. For example, every character in this game that isn't straight is some form of homeless hippie. So it's fair to say that I'm not a fan of the story of this game. And honestly, it was a slog to finish it. The pacing did not help and it was also pretty messy. This is where the things that I said at the beginning come to make more sense now. The first three episodes are pretty long and at times rather slow, even somewhat meandering. Even if there's always a goal that I won't spoil, 
even though I think the way the game sets itself up, I think most people would be against that goal, which doesn't help. And then the final two episodes are really fast and kinda rushed. The story comes to a seriously horrible ending, or ending should I say. There are multiple given by a single choice at the end, so all the choices up till that point hardly matter, only making small changes in the two primary endings. It really feels like a melding of all the bad things in this game into one, really emphasizing the lack of understanding of the issues put forward in the story by the writers. Given this weird pacing between episodes, it's very hard for me to imagine having played this episodically. I wonder how it would have felt. Now, I've been very negative so far. I would like to point out a few things I like about the story. The relationship between the brothers has its moments of companionship and surviving together, dealing with trust and sharing pain, even if a lot of these ruined by overdramatic and cheesy sequences on the later half of the game. Even if cheesy and not very realistic, there is still some sweet moments between the brothers and the characters of this game deemed morally good. I think it's important to point out that this game isn't completely soulless. In fact, I'm sure a lot of its themes were tackled from a position of care, rather than purposefully misrepresent them. And this is now the part of the video where I tell you if you should or should not play this game. And as far as my opinion goes, it's a no. I think there are better games out there in this genre alone. And this game is not one I feel it's worth playing through, even if it's particularly visually pleasing. Now, this game has a fairly positive score online and people seem to like this series. So I can't discount the idea that what I don't like might be something you do. Maybe what I saw as overdramatic and cheesy won't be for you. And for that I say play the first episode which can be found for free. I cannot recommend Captain Spirit which is sort of a prequel to this game. As an entry point to this game I feel the Captain Spirit gives off a totally different vibe and idea even if that game directly ties into that one. If you want to play Captain Spirit then you can do it, but I wouldn't say it's well representative of this game. And that was it for another review. I believe this is my longest review yet on this channel, at least I guess. I don't I didn't expect to have so much to say about this particular game, but that's a good thing. I legitimately hope I did not offend anyone during this review. I know there is quite a lot of big Life is Strange fans out there and I respect your opinions and I'm free to discuss them in the comments or on my social media in a respectful manner. So yeah, if you enjoyed this video, um, please subscribe and like because that would be greatly appreciated. Also, I'm very sorry if you could hear some background noise. There's been some crazy rain and you can hear it and you know you can really hear it here in my room so I'm sorry if that was something that was noticeable to you. Hopefully I'm lucky and the next video I record doesn't happen during insane rains, who knows? Regardless, thank you for watching and I hope to see you in the next one.